Hello students and welcome back to Saurabh's classes. My name is Ashmita and in today's class we are going to uh, discuss certain uh, questions, rather solve certain questions which are based on sentence completion and uh, these are very common in uh, uh, English diagnostic tests uh, like which are normally given in the GRE examinations. So let's start discussing and solving these questions. We are going to solve five questions today and we are going to keep on solving these kind of questions in each and every video so do follow uh, our videos let's start uh, with the with the question that is given the direction is given as each sentence below has one or two blanks all right each blank indicating that something has been omitted beneath the sentence are five lettered words or sets of words Choose the word or the set of words for each blank that best fits the meaning of the sentence as a whole. So basically, in simple words, we can say that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, you will be given certain fill in the gaps just like the way you have done in your school days and you just need to fill up with the correct option. You will be given five options and you just need to fill up with the correct options. That's it. So first we are going to see the sentence that is a dash statement is a, is an dash comparison. It, it, it does not compare things explicitly but suggests a likeliness between them. So first of all explicitly means in a clear and detailed manner. Okay. I'm writing it down clear manner. All right. But suggests a likeliness between them. So, maybe they are talking about a statement and the comparison which says that it does not compare things clearly but it suggests a likeliness between them. We have to put each of these options which are shown over here and choose the correct option that makes complete sense in the statement. Alright, let's put these options one by one and check which option shall go correctly. Uh, the first option sarcastic and unfair a sarcastic statement okay sarcastic means which is marked by bitterness and a power or will to cut or sting like basically you can say sarcastic means uh, something which hurts you someone is telling you something which will hurt you you can say kind of sting not in literal sense sting but something which pokes you or something which hurts you that is sting sting um, words okay if i put a sarcastic a sarcastic statement if i put is an dash comparison is an unfair comparison unfair means you all know unfair means that uh, it's not fair enough so if I put this one, it's not coming to a good meaning. Okay, so I'm uh, striking this out. This won't go with the statement above. Let us check option number B. Option number B is blatant and overt. Blatant means like kind of transparent or obvious or open or undisguised you can say. In simple words, you can say something which doesn't have anything hidden in it. Like it, it is quite open enough for everyone to understand or everyone to see or everyone to hear. Everything is quite open, blatant meaning. All right. And what is the meaning of overt? Now overt means once again the same thing just like blatant. It means undisguised or unconcealed. Something which is shown openly. All right. I am writing the most easiest one that is open or openly. If I put this option, a blatant statement that is an open or an undisguised statement is an overt comp uh, is an overt comparison, is an open comparison. No, we cannot see this. Like this, the, the bo both the words are having the same meaning. So what's the point of putting two two words of similar meaning in the uh, in the sentence in a given? So I'm. Uh, putting a cross over here. This will also not go. Let us check option number C that is sanguine and inherent. 
What is the meaning of sanguine? Sanguine means either cheerful or bright or hopeful. All right. So in simple words, you can say it's cheerful. They're quite happy. And inherent means something which is existing in you, which is there in you. You can, in simple words, you can say innate, innate uh, feelings or innate, um, even diseases are uh, sometimes inherent. Like sugar, sugar is a disease which is inherent in uh, a family. Like if the father has or the grandmother has, then obviously the grandchild may have in his old days. So inherent is that type of thing which is existing, which will get transferred from generation to generation. The same thing. I just gave an example. This may, may or may not happen. I just gave example for inherent about that sugar part. Okay, inherent means something which is existing. So if I put inherent, uh, a sanguine statement is an dash comparison, is an existing comparison. No, this won't go. Yes, first of all, cheerful cannot go with a statement. So this is once again wrong. So I'm striking it out. Let's check number D. Number D is given metaphorical and implied. Now, metaphorical means kind of symbolic or you can also say imaginative. I'm writing on the meaning over here. It's like kind of symbolic. All right. And implied means something which is implicit or suggested, but it is not directly expressed. All right. So there is some kind of uh, uh, things which are hidden, like it's not properly open. So I'm writing hidden in simple sense. So metaphorical, if I put a metaphorical statement is an implied comparison. Obviously, metaphorical means kind of symbolic. So if I say symbolic, obviously it is referring to certain things which are not disclosed. We all know the meaning of metaphor. Metaphor doesn't seem to express everything about a particular thing. They only talk about uh, certain things or certain characteristics of that particular thing in symbolic sense. They do not talk about the entire uh, or, the, or all the aspects of that particular thing. They keep certain things hidden. So this would go appropriately with the sentence. Uh, this is number D. I'm ticking it. That is, it will appropriately go with the statement or the sentence above that is metaphorical and applied. But, but, but let us see number E also because we need to understand uh, why this is the most appropriate option which, the, which, is, which is going. So number E is bellicose and ardent. Now what is the meaning of bellicose? Bellicose means aggressive or, or belligerent you can say. So in simple words you all know the meaning of aggressive. Aggressive means quite uh, like qu quite angry or irritated and all okay. So aggressive I have written. Bellicose is aggressive and ardent means passionate about something. So if, uh, if I put... Um, if I put these two words in the sentence which is provided above, uh, will, it, will it come to a proper meaning? I don't think so. If I put a bellicose statement, we cannot put it. A bellicose statement, aggressive statement. See, a bellicose statement, aggressive statement, a statement can never be aggressive. That's quite common sense. So this would be wrong. So, the most appropriate option for this question would be option number D. Alright, let's move over to the next question that is question number 2. Now, question number two says, uh, modern architecture has discarded the dash trimming on buildings and has concentrated on an almost Greek simplicity of line. So, they are talking about modern architecture's characteristics, like how modern architecture are happening, 
like what are inclusive and what are excluded from it. They are telling that modern architecture has already discarded the trimming on buildings portion like they used to do previously. Trimming means you are like, uh, uh, what should I say? Trimming means uh, like girls do trimming on, uh, on their hair, right? The, the portions which get damaged, they just cut it off. And uh, similarly, this happens to buildings also. But uh, trimming on buildings means kind of like, uh, you can say small pieces which are not good enough to the building are trimmed off just to give a proper shape or a proper style to the building or something fanciful is done to the building. So those things are discarded nowadays and has concentrated on an almost Greek simplicity of line. So nowadays modern architecture totally focuses on the Greek simplicity of line. So very simple architecture is being done nowadays. So you can say that modern architecture has discarded the entire system of trimming on buildings. Let us see which word would go in this blank above. Flamboyant. First of all, if I put flamboyant, flamboyant means um, kind of uh, elaborate or fancy. I'm writing down fancy. Uh, now, if I put flamboyant, modern architecture has discarded the flamboyant trimming on buildings yes it can go because flamboyant means fancy as well as elaborate so kind of i told you while explaining only that uh, those were certain fancy stuff or certain old stuff which were just discarded from the buildings because or trimmed off from the buildings in order to make the buildings look more appropriate so these flamboyant trim, uh, trimmings are now not done okay so we can put flamboyant over here, but let us check the other options also. We may not know even other better options can be found over here. What is the meaning of austere? Now austere means uh, kind of strict or you can say severe. All right. Or you can say like a stern. So if I put uh, austere over here, Modern architecture has discarded the austere trimming on buildings. So if I put austere, it won't go. Strict trimmings, what, uh, this is not making any sense. You are, you are uh, telling about trimmings being strict. Simply doesn't go. So I am striking this option out. What about option number C? Inconspicuous. Insco inconspicuous means unnoticeable. All right. So uh, they are talking about unnoticeable trimmings. So if trimmings are done, obviously it, it is done to make the, uh, make the buildings look much more appropriate. So if those are un uh, unnoticeable, uh, those are inconspicuous, then how are those done? Why are those done? So we cannot uh, take this option to be correct. What about option number D? Aesthetic. Aesthetic means which is concerned with beauty or the appreciation of beauty. So in simple words, we can say it's beauty. So uh, this will also not go. Beauty trimmings or aesthetic trimmings won't go. So I'm striking this out also. Next is derivative. Modern architecture has discarded the derivative trimming. Derivative trimming, no. Derivative, first of all, means which is derived from the original. All right. Uh, sim in simple word, it means derived from the original. So we cannot say that the trimmings are derived. So this uh, will be wrong once again. So the, be the best option would be option number A. Okay, let us move over to the, the next question that is question number 3. Question number three says, if you are seeking dash that will resolve all our ailments, then you are undertaking an impossible task. 
so this uh, uh, this thing is uh, talking about uh, a person who is seeking something that is given as dash that will resolve all the problems and that is why that person is said to be taking undertaking an impossible task obviously if you are trying to seek something that will solve all your problems you will never find that particular thing because problems will come and go and therefore you cannot uh, find a solution a uh, one one time solution to all your problems so that is an impossible task this is what the sentence is saying let us put these options and check which one goes the best first is a precedent uh, a precedent if you are seeking a precedent that will resolve okay precedent means a model or an example or a pattern you can say <clears throat> so uh, uh, this this won't go because you cannot seek a model okay you cannot seek uh, a pattern or an example you cannot uh, you can you cannot seek or find precedence so i'm crossing it out what about panacea now panacea means a one time solution to all your problems like it's a solution or a remedy you can say all right i'm writing down remedy over here it's kind of a remedy for all kinds of difficulties or all kinds of diseases so we can say this can go till now uh, what about the other options uh, let us just check abstraction and abstraction means the quality of dealing with ideas rather than with events so it deals with ideas if i put if you are seeking an abstraction that will resolve all our ailments then you are undertaking an impossible task so um thinking about an idea doesn't require to be called a task all right so it's not an impossible task to talk about an idea to find an idea so they are uh, obviously talking about something uh, or you can say a remedy or some solution that uh, undertaking which or finding which is an impo is an impossible task so about remedy or solution we have already found out in second option so this one is not going number c but let us check the other options also uh, a direction if i put if you are seeking a direction that will resolve all our ailments no direction you cannot put direction direction means either this side that side that kind of direction they are talking about so now they are talking about uh, that if you if you are trying to find a direction that will solve all your problems then that is an impo uh, that then that finding that direction is an impossible task so this is not uh, correct best option would be panacea even till now we can see it's panacea what about contrivance now contrivance means a scheme so uh, they are talking about a scheme that will solve all their problems all right um, and finding that scheme is an impossible task uh, it's better to talk about remedies and solutions rather than schemes so it's better you uh, you choose number b b would be the correct option let us move over to question number 4 question number 4 says i have no motive in offering this advice i seek no personal advantage or honor so uh, a person is saying that uh, he doesn't have any motive any dash motive any kind of motive in offering this advice so he is basically advising about something and he is saying that he doesn't have any kind of uh, like uh, inner uh, like the feeling of uh, offering this service in return of any advantage or in return of something he is just giving uh, his personal opinion that's it i seek no personal advantage or honor 
so he is uh, focusing on no pro no personal gain or no personal honor he is just giving uh, out his opinion that's it let us put uh, each of these options and see the best option which suits here nominal now nominal means kind of like formal or official you can say so if i put uh, nominal over here I have no nominal motive in offering this service. No, uh, like uh, formal motive. No, he doesn't have any kind of formal motive. Uh, this won't go. It's not like it's going. But uh, if if we find uh, better answers than this, then definitely we won't we won't be considering this one. All right. Then is altruistic. Altruistic. Okay. Altruistic means unselfish or selfless. So kind of like um, um, not thinking about yourself too much and rather rather helping others selfless. So uh, this one if I put I have no altruistic motive in offering this advice. Selfless, ad no, no, this won't go. What about incongruous? Incongruous means like out of place or out of keeping. Like you are out of your like place and you are just like confused. So I have no uh, in, incongruous motive. So th this from the meaning itself, you can understand that uh, this won't go. What about disinterested? You are not interested, right? I have no disinterested motive. See, this is also not going. What about uh, the last option, ulterior, the only one which is left. Uh, if we see that this is better than the first one, then obviously we will choose this. Ulterior. Ulterior means under, underlying or secondary. So if I put this one over here, I have no underlying motive in offering this advice. So this person is saying that I have no underlying motive. Like uh, beneath the uh, like the words that I am saying, beneath that, I do not have anything else in my heart. I am speaking my heart out. There is no secondary motive in offering this advice to you. Whatever I'm saying, that's clear cut. All right. So this would go uh, go better here. So I would rather choose option E to be the correct answer. Let us move over to question number five. This park has been preserved in all its dash wildness so that visitors in future years may see how people lived during the 18th century so they are talking about a park uh, who has preserved all its wildness dash wildness they have told so that visitors can like come and visit this park uh, in the future years and also uh, see the the raw uh, the raw lifestyle of the people of the 18th century so let us see which option suits the best if i say hedonistic Hedonistic means self-indulgent, all right. Self-indulgent or you can say like quite uh, always thinking about uh, his own self. So uh, he hedonistic won't go. The This park has been preserved in all its hedonistic wildness. No, it won't go. I'm striking this out. Option A, wrong. Option B, prospective. Now prospective means... Uh, Kind of uh, from uh, from your possibility or your potential. Okay. Possible, you can say. Okay. This will also not go. If I put this uh, park has been preserved in all its, uh, all its prospective wildness. No, no. Uh, we can consider but uh, let us check the other options also if we find better options then obviously we are going to not consider option b let us see esoteric now esoteric means kind of uh, difficult or hard all right i'm writing down difficult or or you can say hard So, uh, if I put uh, esoteric, like this park has been preserved in all its esoteric wildness. Uh, in all its hard and difficult wildness, no, this is just not going. I'm striking number C out. What about number D? 
untrammeled now untrammeled means which is not confined all right which is is open and it is it is not confined or it is not limited it is limitless so uh, if i put this park has been preserved in all its untrammeled wildness no this won't go what about pristine if i put what is the meaning of pristine first of all pristine means perfect So obviously perfect wildness if I put this park has been preserved in all its pristine wildness like perfect wildness. So you can say everything is perfect even for uh, even in the future years so that people can go there and see the raw lifestyle of the people of the 18th century. So you can say that option number E would be the correct option over here. So that was the entire discussion for today's class. We are going to meet once again in our other classes.